All right, guys, let's check out this new release from Seiko. This is the SSC-813 using the Movement V192. Retail price $675. I don't think you're going to find any deals on this watch. They're pretty scarce from what I understand. I was talking to Mimo, the, uh, my Seiko authorized dealer of choice, who actually sent over this watch, and he's not getting very many, like at all. Like I think he got a couple of them, tops. And this is one of them, which I picked up. So, uh, yeah, if you're after one of these, especially in the Panda dial like this, which I think is awesome, with some not-so-awesome parts, then I think just suck it up and pick it up. Because retail price on it is $675, like I said. There's the box, the part number, and everything. Standard Seiko box, but awesome watch. So 39.5 millimeter is the case width. 45.6 millimeter is the lug to lug. 13 and a half millimeter thick. It does have a single domed sapphire crystal up top. 20 millimeter lug width. Bracelet tapers down to 18. You have a milled center section. You have a stamped outer section. Well, that might be milled actually. That's that's not stamped. That's a little bit better than that. Only two micro adjusts. So uh, I was able to get a good fit on it. Bracelet is actually decent, although it doesn't match the watch. Like, at all. And I think a lot of other people pointed that out, too. Like, it looks like it's from something else and it happened to fit. And they're like, hey, guys, we already have a bracelet. Don't don't uh, design one for the case. Just use this. Pretty lazy. I don't know. I don't like that. But it uses a pin and collar system. So when you're sizing it up, make sure you uh, don't lose those little collars. But uh, nice little bracelet links and pin and collar works out fine. Just slow down and take your time doing it. I have, there's videos out there showing you how to do it. Sized up for my seven and a quarter inch wrist, weighs in at 152 gram, has a 100 meter water resist. It is a push pull crown. The crown is actually oversized at seven millimeter, which is kind of nice. Let me pop this on my wrist real quick so you can see what it looks like. There you go. Looks, feels, wears great. Like I said, I don't, the bracelet doesn't really match it, but I don't feel like looking to see if there's something that works better for it. I'm good with the way it looks and works on wrist. Extremely comfortable. All right, let's zoom in on this, and I want to take a closer look at the dial, of course. So that is solar. So those subdials right there, you can kind of see they look black. Totally fine right there. But when you get a little light on them, you can see that that's the solar cell. That's where they power up. Now, it does have a power reserve down here on the bottom at the 6 o'clock location. That is the fuel indicator. So you can see it is full. It's topped off. And then you have your hour minute, and you have your chronograph hand. You have your running seconds. And then you have your 24-hour clock and your date down here. Pretty simple, legible, easy-to-use layout. Applied logo. It is a Prospect series. And you have the tachometer ring on the outside. And that's a coated black steel. I'm not sure if it's DLC or just ion. I'm not 100% sure on that. Hopefully it doesn't get scratched up too bad, but if it does, it does. Okay, now, functions. You pull the crown one position, you're going to be able to change the date. You pull it out the last position, you're going to be able to change the time. Pretty simple, right? There's some other things going on. Of course, we can run the chronograph. Go ahead and start it. And when you do that, you probably missed it, and I'll, I'll do it again for you. It has a slow sweep back. The power indicator down here, which is kind of covered up by the hands. Let's just move those hands out of the way. We'll move those hands out of the way for you. Okay. So, power indicator is on full, right? When you hit the chronograph, look at the, don't look at the chronograph hand, look at the power indicator. It immediately jumps over into chronograph mode. So now it's going to keep track of your minutes down there. It has a 60-minute counter. Okay, we're not going to run it. But essentially, when that loops around, you'll see it jump one minute. Okay, I'm not going to do that, though. All right, so when you reset it, it stays in there. It'll, re it'll resort back after a certain amount of time. But if you want to go back to your power indicator, just hit your B button. This is A button. This is B button. And it'll go back to that. The other thing I want to show you as I zoom out back a little bit is occasionally your hands will misalign. Mostly your chronograph and your uh, power indicator one. What causes it? I don't know. It could be magnetism. could be a bump. Who knows? 
they're pretty easy to adjust. This is, I know tail end of the video, I should probably do a standalone, but essentially pull your crown out all the way. Hold your A button down. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get it all the way out. Bear with me here, guys. So pull the crown all the way out, double positions, okay? Now hold your A button down, and then you've seen the um, power indicator hand move. Now that means you're gonna adjust your power indicator. So use your B button to adjust it. So if it's out of a line, what you wanna do is you wanna bring it around. Where you're gonna set it is you wanna set it directly on the E mark not the 60, you wanna set it on the E mark, okay? Now, to do your chronograph hand, you hit the A button again, it's gonna sweep your chronograph hand, and if your chronograph hand was out of a line, now you use your B button to adjust it. See what I'm doing here? And it'll speed up, if you hold it, it'll start to sweep, and then let off, and then slowly walk it into where you want it to be aligned. Why these get align unaligned, I don't know, or misaligned. But uh, right there looks good. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and push your crown in and then the chronograph hand will stay where it is. And then you can see that the sol or power reserve hand will jump up to the full charge because that's where we're at on the full charge. Okay, just a little extra and a little nugget there for you guys. It's simple. And that information is, you can find it online. I'll put a link to the manual online. All right, let's check the loom on this bad boy and then I'm out of here. I think I went long enough. So there you go. It is not a loom monster by any means. Uh, the camera's picking up blue. It's it's kind of a greenish blue to the naked eye. I don't think it's as blue as it looks on camera. Maybe it is. Maybe my eyes are going wonky. But you really only have loom at the 12, 3, 6, and 9, and then the hour and minute. And it's not super great anyway. But it's there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next bid.